Hello everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you're all doing well. Uh, we're going to start a new chapter uh, today and uh, this is on the concept of uh, structural analysis. Okay. Uh, so structural analysis. And uh, in structural analysis, uh, we are going to come across uh, two uh, main concepts and uh, these are the concepts of uh, trusses. And then later on, we will look at uh, frames. Okay, and uh, this means that uh, we're going to start our situation by uh, looking at uh, trusses. And I'm sure that um, as you have been traveling or when there was a chance that we could travel much more than we can now, uh, you'd have come across uh, bridges and uh, bridges uh, would have uh, these arrangements of uh, bars in uh, different kinds of patterns and that essentially is an example of a truss or if you look at uh, the roof of your home um, you will see an arrangement of uh, wooden beams or maybe steel beams uh, which are uh, held together in order to cock, in order to form a structure and uh, this is this is called as a truss okay uh, so in a sense truss is a combination of uh, beams or bars okay so trusses are Truss is a combination of uh, beams or bars such that they create a rigid structure. Okay, and uh, this can then be used for providing structural support. Okay, so such a structure can be used for providing structural support. And that's the whole idea of a uh, truss, okay? And uh, typically the trusses, uh, and I have a couple of pictures that are coming up, so I'm going to mention that in a, in a minute. Uh, but typically the trusses, uh, they're made up of, uh, you know, either wooden beams or wooden bars, or they're made up of steel bars. And it could be made up of pretty much any metal or any material for that matter. Okay. Uh, but they are made up of a collection of these bars. Okay. So the components of a truss. Uh, let me go back to my regular color. components of a truss okay so these are typically made of the bars of a truss bars or the beams of the truss these are called as the members of the truss okay okay and then these uh, bars or beams, they are held together by means of pins or joints. Okay, the, the bars are end connected to each other by pins or what are called as joints. Okay, so a couple of uh, terms uh, that uh, we're going to be of... Uh, um, use to us uh, that are going to be of use to us. Uh, these are uh, the bars of the beams of a truss. These are typically called as the members of a truss. Sometimes I call them as the bars of the truss. Uh, it's all the same thing. And then these bars are connected end to end by means of pins or joints. Okay. And uh, here you're going to see an example and an instead of instead of pin, one more thing I want to say instead of pins or joints, uh, you could also have these uh, bars uh, welded or riveted to each other welded or uh, riveted okay those are also uh, possible and uh, you could have them in a combination of uh, pins which is called as a gusset uh, plate okay uh, we are not interested in that we are just going to assume that okay <clears throat> for the sake of simplicity they are all just connected end to end by pins and uh, here is an example of a truss as you can see Okay, so this is a bridge. I have uh, obtained this uh, figure from uh, usbridge.com. I think a company that specializes 
uh, in bridge construction. Of course, I'm not rooting for them or anything. Uh, they're doing a great job nevertheless. Um, so here is a, a set of bars, as you can see. And uh, these bars are uh, connected together by means of these uh, uh, gusset plates. Okay, these things that you see here. Okay, these are called as the gusset plates. And uh, these are nothing but an arrangement of uh, uh, lots of pins. And uh, these are the bars of the truss themselves. Bars, and then you know you can see them that they're pin connected. Pins or collection of pins. Okay, so this is a collection of pins. Okay, and uh, this entire structure, it performs the fact that, okay, it allows people to walk through these bridges or it allows cars to be uh, walking across uh, walking across uh, the water and so on so it does serve a very useful purpose right in the form of providing structural support to the people who'd like to uh, walk past uh, this uh, uh, amount of water here okay or cross this river of some kind uh, here is an example of another one which is a, a roof truss okay so here is a roof truss And you can once again see that uh, you have uh, these uh, wooden bars here. Okay, so these are the members of the truss, right? And uh, you can see here that uh, these are also once again held together by a collection of pins. Uh, we will just assume it to be one single giant pin just for simplicity, but typically you're going to have a pattern of pins that are combined, uh, combining these bars together at uh, the ends, okay? Uh, so these are once again these uh, plates that we call as the gusset plates okay so um, once again you know these are uh, typically structures as you can see the roof truss and the bridge truss you know they're both used for structural support uh, they're made up of a collection of members or a collection of uh, bars and beams and uh, they are very useful for us because uh, a lot of our day-to-day -day activities depend on um, the um, design and uh, proper construction of these kinds of trusses okay all right. So, um, in terms of uh, the construction of a truss, what are the steps that are typically taken, or in the design of a truss, what are the steps that are taken? Okay. So, in the design of a truss, okay, uh, what are the things? Uh, where do we stand? Okay. Where does ME uh, twenty ten stand? So, the design of a truss uh, typically, well, my good friend the straight line is not working in my favor again all right uh, so in the design of a truss uh, you typically you know perform a force analysis okay this force analysis is intended to obtain the forces in each of the bars of the truss okay so this way you obtain the force in each bar of the truss okay uh, then the next step in the design of trusses is uh, the stress analysis okay you look at uh, the uh, stresses that are uh, withstood by these uh, trusses okay so look at at stresses and strains in the truss members and the third step is typically you know if you want to make sure that uh, the bars of the truss do not fail then you have to ensure at least in a very simplistic way you have to ensure that uh, the maximum stresses on these bars does not exceed the allowable stress of the material which will cause the material to fail okay so then the next step is called as design and failure analysis or design against failure Okay, this is uh, typically looking at um, the uh, results from stress analysis, but the results from stress analysis will use the results from force analysis. So typically the first thing you've got to do is force analysis that will feed to the stress analysis. If you perform the stress analysis, then I can look at material failure and uh, limiting value of uh, stresses. Okay, so this will be based on uh, material properties. And uh, design, of course, is uh, dependent on many other factors as well. It depends on how much space you have, depends on how much money 
you want to invest it depends on the type of material that you're in, in, uh, interested in obtaining and uh, uh, depends on the application uh, so many other uh, factors right so many external factors as well so what we do in ME 2010 is a force analysis okay so that is what we are interested in so the first step of uh, the design of a truss is what we do so we do this in ME 2010 okay then stress analysis is typically the next aspect of uh, uh, the design of a truss this is typically done in ME 2020 okay and then if you are interested further in going forward uh, the design against this uh, failure is uh, typically done by looking at ideas of failure theories, static failure theories, and then coming up with uh, material parameters that will enable us to design against failure. This is typically done in uh, what are called as uh, machine elements and uh, design courses. Uh, typically for us, that is called as ME3670 and uh, ME... 3671 okay so as it stands what we do in statics is the most fundamental aspect of a design of trust okay so uh, this is of uh, great consequence whatever we do in statics is of great consequence to what will happen in the next step of uh, trust analysis okay so when we talk about trust analysis there are two methods that will be typically followed okay so methods of analysis methods of force analysis and uh, these are called as the method of joints and the method of sections okay method of joints and then the method of sections typically i like to call these as m o j and uh, m o s okay and uh, we will of course be looking at both the uh, types of um, analysis okay and uh, we will try to understand uh, uh, how to um, perform the force analysis uh, uh, depending on what type of a problem we are asked to solve we could use either the method of sections or the method of joints but we need to know both okay uh, so both the methods of analysis are important and to perform the analysis we are going to assume certain things okay so assumptions in force analysis of trusses okay this is uh, probably the most important aspect of this uh, very short talk uh, what are the assumptions and what are the ramifications of these assumptions okay uh, so here are my assumptions i'm going to assume that the bars or members of a truss are weightless which means i'm not necessarily saying that they don't have any weight but i'm assuming that the weight of these bars is much smaller than the actual load applied okay that is the that is the bars have a weight that is much smaller than the external forces acting on the trusses okay so that is the thing that we want to specify here then the second thing we're going to say is that uh, whenever we look at the loading of a truss we will have the applied forces only at the pins of the truss okay so loading of a truss We will assume that the external forces, forces are applied only at the pins of the truss or joints of the truss. Okay, and uh, which means that uh, there will be no couple moments acting on trusses. Okay, so no couple moments acting on trusses. The external forces do not directly act on the bars of the truss. Okay, so the external forces 
do not act directly on the members of the trust of course we are still going to have external forces but they are acting only at the pins or the joints of the trust and then the third thing the third assumption is that we are going to neglect friction at the pins okay and what is the consequence of this assumption the consequence of this assumption is a pretty major thing okay and uh, the reason is that because of all these assumptions each and every bar of a truss is a two force member okay because of all these assumptions due to these assumptions and this will be evident when we start solving a problem using the method of joints and sections due to these assumptions each and every bar of a truss of a truss is a two force member you may recall two force members that we learned when we started a rigid body equilibrium two dimensional rigid body equilibrium and what is the purpose of learning it the purpose is that we are going to make use of that for truss analysis each and every bar of the truss due to these assumptions is going to be a two force member which means that the forces are going to be acting at the points at the end points of the bar and uh, these forces are going to have the same line of action and the line of action is just going to be given by joining one end of the bar to the other okay so this implies okay so since each bar of a truss is a two force member this implies that the forces will be acting at the ends of the bar of the truss ends of the bars okay these forces will be equal in magnitude opposite in direction and will share the same line of action okay this is true of any method that you use for the analysis of the truss whether you use um, uh the method of joints or the method of sections it makes no difference okay all right so we're going to end our introduction to trusses uh, with this uh, particular thought here and in uh, summary you know here is what we started off with uh, we are now moving to the idea of structural analysis we want to design rigid structures so that they are able to help support many of the applications that we intend to design okay uh, one of them is uh, trusses and in trusses you have a combination of beams or bars that are uh, held together by pins and uh, this uh, forms a rigid structure and uh, such a structure is useful for providing structural support components of a truss we looked at two of them they are they are called the bars of the truss they are the members of the truss they can be made of metal you know so they could be metal uh, let me just make a statement here metal or wood um you could also have uh, maybe lightweight materials uh, perhaps uh, if you're designing the uh, wings of an aircraft uh, probably the aircraft wings are going to have trusses on them there and uh, they could be designed from uh, much more modern lightweight materials but that is also an equally important aspect of uh, structural analysis and uh, the bars are connected to each other by pins or joints these are typically welds or rivets but we're going to assume them to be the same as pins or joints okay and uh, here is a couple of uh, trusses for you to look at uh, we see that there are several bars here connected by these plates of uh, uh, pins which are called as the gusset plates um i i need to check my spelling i'm i'm pretty sure it's g u s s e t not not t t but but you can also do it for me okay it's your homework for the day 
then I have uh, this roof truss here. This is something that you would have probably obviously seen uh, if you're going to parks and so on. Uh, so these are very useful to us. Uh, they form a very important integral part of our day-to-day -day existence. We see them every day. Our homes exist because of these uh, trusses, these truss arrangements. And so our focus is going to be on these uh, trusses. Uh, and uh, as things stand, in MA 2010, you're learning the first level of analysis of a truss. Okay. And um, we have a couple of methods of analysis and uh, what we are going to look at are planar trusses only. So that's something I want to make a note of. So planar. planar trusses or 2D trusses. Okay, we can also have uh, uh, non-planar or uh, space trusses. Uh, we are not going to be looking at that topic. Okay, method of joints and method of sections and then we come to the assumptions and the bars are weightless. Uh, then uh, the loads on the forces, uh, the, the external forces are applied only at the pins of the joints and then uh, we are also going to neglect friction at the pins and due to these assumptions Every bar of a truss is a two-force member. And uh, what is the advantage? If it's a two-force member, then I immediately know how to draw the force on the bar of a truss. It's just going to be along the line joining the end points of the truss of that particular bar, right? And uh, so this is the idea of uh, why having it as a two-force member is useful. Um, why are we analyzing something this way? Is because uh, if you look at the actual problem of truss analysis, it's probably more complicated than it is. But by means of these assumptions, we are simplifying many of these complications and we are trying to understand this on a certain basic or a fundamental level so that we can build on top of our understanding and uh, try to design against failure. Okay. All right. I hope all of you are doing well and uh, staying safe. Uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, we're going to be looking at a couple of problems on trusses. Bye bye.